Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. Today I'm joined by Henry Das, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Henry? I'm good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And Henry's an entrepreneurial coach, author of FQ Financial Intelligence, personal finance coach and business coach. And today we're going to talk about sales. So Henry, uh, one of the things that I think a lot of people have been um, talking about is, okay, so we've been in this strange pandemic this year, obviously, strange situation. A lot of uh, salespeople have had to adjust the way they sell, selling virtually, etc. What are some of the things that you have seen, some of the adjustments that salespeople have had to make, and what are the successful adjustments people have made, and maybe not so many, and they're not so successful? I guess the biggest one is understanding the nuances and the difference between doing things online and doing them face to face. Um, in fact, I just got off a call earlier today where uh, they were talking about uh, the transition that coaches were making. Uh, I've been, uh, since I started about 10 years ago, I've been doing this virtually. So mm -hmm. it was no adjustment for me whatsoever. But for other folks that I've spoken to, uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Like, how do we, how do we transition from, you know, pressing the flesh to, to doing this across uh, the internet on Zoom or on Skype? Um, a lot of the conversational nuance goes out the window, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I read a statistic years ago that said only about 15% of communication are the actual words. The other, the other 85% are tone and, and nonverbal cues, body English, eye contact, all of those things. And um, they're very hard to replicate in an online scenario. Yeah. And uh, so I, that's, and I think, a, that's a huge challenge. Yeah. And I think as well, probably something that has been surprising to some salespeople, especially those who excel in face-to-face -face and working rooms and all of that kind of stuff, that online for some of them has been very difficult uh it, it they they haven't made that uh, that transition as easily as maybe some other people in fact some people would say uh you know people who maybe aren't as good in in face to face or whatever have actually transitioned better to 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 online no great 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 point um you know the internet is a bit of an equalizer mm -hmm. right so um and if you remove the video component, which is considered kind of rude in Zoom mm -hmm. world, people will tell you to turn your video on. But I've had been on calls with people who are like, ah, you know, I'm still in my pajamas or, or words to that effect. And it's like, ah, all right, get out of your pajamas, shave and, yeah. and look, look presentable because it's a business meeting and you don't get the opportunity to just hide behind that. But if we assume it was audio only, and, and my coaching has almost exclusively been audio, even though it's remote right. and I'm dealing with people in all different time zones. I've had, a, I've had a handful of clients over the years who liked using video, but for the most part, we're just talking. Um, mm -hmm. So you've, you've got to adapt to the fact that you don't have these other tools available, the other nonverbal tools available. So, you, you know, you've got you to gotta raise that game your your spoken word game for the lack of a better yeah. term um and that's you know that's tough yeah. uh, i mean if you're a used car salesman you're used to talking fast right mm -hmm. so i don't think it makes a whole lot of difference but most folks are not out there um selling used cars um they're selling something else they're selling you know seo or they're you know they're a fba a fulfilled by amazon mm -hmm. business or something like that um, I know plenty of people and I've, I've coached them where there is no human interaction. Yeah. There just is none. And they like it that way. They're like, mm -hmm. I don't want to hear from my customers. Yeah. I don't want to speak to them. We'll do occasional email stuff. Um, yeah. so have you raised that game? Yeah. And I, and I think just going back to a moment to the, to the online, uh, the, the interaction uh, a point that you raised there that I think it's a critical one is, is that number one, you have to listen, you have to listen really well, but you also have to draw out the other person. So you've got to ask really good questions and continue to draw them out. 
because you know in an online world obviously uh it, you have to try and keep the person's attention because you don't know sure you don't know what else is distracting them right now so you have to ask searching questions and keep validating what they're saying well there's a lot of techniques that you can use if you've if anybody's ever done imago therapy any of your listeners if anybody's uh uh, done marriage counseling. I've been married uh, almost 30 years. Actually, New Year's will be our 30th anniversary. Congratulations. Um, and thank you. And uh, we've done a lot of that stuff. Um, and certainly in coaching training, you learn about active listening, mm -hmm. right? And it's important for you to stop thinking about what it is you're going to say and actually listen to your customers. That's a yeah. big one. That's a really big one, right? You got no parlor tricks. You got no smoke and mirrors because you're doing something over the line. All you really have is, is your words. Um, in the Imago, we use a technique that's called mirroring, right? Mm -hmm. You can mirror it back to people. So let me see if I've got this right. And you ask permission. And it's a mm -hmm. little, at first it'll sound a little bit forced. And then you can repeat it back to them. Did I get that right? Right, you're giving them the, the, the potential sale agency with that. No, you yeah. didn't quite get it right, Henry. This is really what I meant. Sometimes it takes multiple times. And, that's, and, I, think, and I think that's an incredibly important thing for people to, to hear. I just want to triple underline that is when you do that kind of active listing and you do the kind of validation that Henry's talking about where you say, have I got this correct? Or you will be surprised how many times you either have only got a fraction of it or maybe not at all, but, <laughs> but that it does take a couple of iterations to get it exactly right. But what you're saying to, to your prospect right then is, I really value this exchange and I want to get it correct. And that's a huge trust building exercise. Absolutely, John. Hit the nail on the head with that. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what are some other things that you think that maybe going into the new year that salespeople ought to be thinking about? Maybe things that they haven't been doing that they need to do more of or, or new things that they should be looking at doing? Well, I think... Um you need to get yourself out there as a, I hate to use the word influencer because I don't really know what an influencer is. I still haven't figured it out. You know, I've got, I've got three boys in their twenties and they can't seem to tell me no matter how many times I ask, what exactly is an influencer? Uh, like a game show host. Um, but you really want to become an authority or a thought leader within your space so that customers are coming to you as opposed to you constantly going out there and having to beat the bushes for sales. Mm -hmm. Again, depends on whether you're in a product business or a service business, whether you're selling online or whether you're, you know, old school dialing for dollars. Um, you, talk, you, hit the, you hit the T word, trust, right? You're trying to engender trust with people and there are a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and a lot of them are active, but many of them are passive. Mm. Um, I don't know whether it's, um, you know, spamming the world on Instagram or putting up YouTube videos, whatever it might be. There are a lot of marketing, you know, what we'll call incidental or passive marketing opportunities out there that you may not be taking advantage of while you're out there hustling, trying to find deals. Yeah, <clears throat> no, and I think that's a good point. And I think the point about the expertise piece is, is, a, is a very pertinent one because, and this is where you can work with your own marketing department. You don't have to create everything yourself, uh, but right. certainly, certainly people, when they look you up, when you contact them and they look you up on LinkedIn or wherever, is they want to see that you have some credibility and some of the ways of doing that is to show that you actually know something about their industry or their or whatever products or services they sell right you bring up linkedin i mean linkedin is is 500 million sellers and like six buyers <laughs> everybody is I kind of make a game of it because I have a VA mm -hmm. who does outreach. So while I'm sleeping, she's sending out, mm -hmm. you know, outreach to, you know, probably 50 people a night um, mm -hmm. just to ex expand influence. But when I get an inbound request, um, I've noticed people are just doing what I call the show up and throw up. They're mm -hmm. like, do business with me. It's like, I don't even know who you are. 
So, so now I created a, a sort of a standard response. Thank you so much for contacting me. Here's a little bit about what I do. I'll be honest, I'm not really in the market for any expertise at this point in time. And what I found is um, almost like the more that you put people off and tell them that you don't need anything from them, the more they want to sell you. Right. Um, so I find that pretty interesting. But the point is, uh, take a little time. Like yeah. you said, read their profile, see what it is. You know, I send it out because I'm a business coach. So I send it out to founders and CEOs exclusively. Yeah. Um, but if you're in a different space or maybe a niche space or perhaps even a fuzzy space where it's, you're not, you know, LinkedIn doesn't have the granularity to really get to the person that you want to get to, you're going to have to dig a little deeper, right? It's going, yeah. to, be, it's going to be harder. Let's face and, it. It is. And, and, and interestingly, what you just said there about, about LinkedIn is uh, I did a little survey the other day on LinkedIn. It's a small one. Uh, mm -hmm. A number of people replied to it, but it was about those automated responses. It's like when somebody sends you a connection response and you click connect and then it goes ping. And as you say, there's yeah. suddenly the a message from them and they're trying to sell you something. And I just asked, you know, what, what do you do with these? Do you, I love them. Uh, I, I maybe look at them later. I ignore most of them or I delete immediately. And overwhelmingly it was, I ignore or delete immediately. So maybe mm -hmm. that's something that people want to consider that to your point is get a little more personal, a little more patient when somebody connects with you, don't spam them immediately with your services. Maybe um, take a little time to actually understand them a little more before you start. Hit yeah, I think, I think it's important whether it be in LinkedIn or, or any other yeah, scenario. Exactly. Right? If you're going to buy a used car, I'm looking for a used truck, right? Mm -hmm. I like it when a salesman kind of asks me some probative questions. Yeah. Right? And, you know, what are you going to use it for? What are your needs? Is it a daily driver? You know, there's not that, not that many questions that they need to ask, but at least show a little bit of effort mm. um, instead of just saying, hey, uh, I'm in the SEO business, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know, you want to get uh, better engagement on your site, hire me. It's like, no, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah. And you think about it, if people did that in real life, how bizarre it would be if I said, they said, <laughs> I go, go, hello, I'm John. And you said, hello, I'm Henry. And then I went, Henry, do you want to buy this, buy this, buy this? You'd be like, what in that case, right? People but, yeah, have but done online, it. But I, yeah, I know people have done it, but people online it just it. seems... <laughs> it's, it's like people throw out all decorum and common sense sometimes when oh, it comes yeah. to online. Right. Because ultimately, you know, you're, you're doing a one-on-one -on -one transaction, no matter how you slice it, whether you mm -hmm. go to Amazon and just click on a bunch of stuff, you're still doing a one-on-one a, a -on -one transaction there. It's very yeah. impersonal and whatever. If you're in a commodity business, sure. Right. Um, if I need a toner cartridge, I'm not going to go out onto LinkedIn sure. and engage all the toner cartridge sellers <laughs> to find out who's got the best one and who's going to provide me with the best value, right? It's a commodity. But if I'm looking for something that's more substantial or if I'm looking for something that's service related, mm -hmm. where they're going to need to learn something about me in order to do their job well, well, if the only time you're interested in learning about me is once you book the sale, you're never going to book the sale. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and the point is, like, learning more about you up front, uh, number one, it's, it's, it's to qualify you in as a, as a prospect. It's also to qualify you out. Yeah. Right. Don't go chasing, you know, people who, who are not your, your ideal avatar. There's, mm -hmm. again, it's a numbers game. There's seven and a half billion people on the planet. I take on between eight to 12 clients as a, as a business coach. Right. I like my odds. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of, there's 30 million small businesses here in America. Um, I like my odds that I'll find a yeah. bunch of people, but it's going to take time to nurture those. Right. And by being selective, uh, you know, how, because that's, I think, the, always the, 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 the conflict or the, the, that some salespeople have is like they just try to go for volume, 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 yeah. um, rather than quality and being selective. I mean, when you um, say with your, within your own uh, business, because you are selective, what difference does that make to your, to your whole process? 
A um, couple things. Um, you know, I, I sell via the strategy session. So I've got to get mm -hmm. online with somebody. They've got to schedule something for me. They go to my website, you know, dasknowledge.com. They click, it says, get my help. And then we set up a strategy session. I have found that usually it takes more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I've had people after 10 minutes say, you know, I'm sold, uh, sign me up, let's get started. Right. But I've had other people who have said, nah, you know, after the fact, not for me. And then a month later, they sign up for another one because they realize it is for them. Um, you know, it, 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 it's going to take, the sales cycle is going to vary. It can be instantaneous. It could be a long time. Uh, you've got to understand that as a salesperson. And you've also got to understand that you've got limited resources. So don't chase people who are not uh, at least within the scope of your ideal sales avatar, mm -hmm. right? Now, what you, see, what you see happen with people who are what I'll call fledgling or novice salespeople is they're just, you know, they're working on Salesforce and they just want to be yeah. able to check off a box that says, I had 16 conversations today. Wow, yeah. whoop de doo look at you. Not a single one of those was a quality conversation. The guy who's the top sales guy said, nah, you know what? I had two conversations and they're both really, really high value prospects. Who's going to book more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, the discerning one for sure. Exactly. But you know what? There, 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 a lot of times there's just a lack of sales training that goes on, whether you're a large company or a small company. Um, you're not necessarily empowered. You're given a quota. Mm hmm and you better make your numbers. Now you're back to the used car salesman, right? He's <laughs> got to make his numbers, right? Yeah. I read a book years ago um, that, I, that I actually quoted in my book. It's called Fighting Chance, fightingchance.com. And they give you reports yeah. on, uh, and they give you a methodology. So I followed his methodology. And he's like, you got to wait till the end of the month, <laughs> right? You got to wait till the last two, three days of the month. That's when guys are looking at their book and saying, dude, I got to make my numbers. I'm just yeah. not going to get anything. I mean, exactly. the last last new car that I bought, I took uh, I took delivery on Halloween, right? Mm -hmm. I negotiated for two days with the guy. He he yep. caved. I got my number. We're good to go. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part of it. Is you know you got to know your to the point that you just said there is you got to have your your buyer avatar know exactly who your target customer is and focus mm -hmm. on that and folk and and rather than playing the volume game, try and focus focus on the quality the game, game is 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 tough it's, mm -hmm. there are guys who are good at it it's um but it's it's tough it's a grind yeah. Yeah. and that's why guys like that get you know especially like wall streety guys that i know yeah. who are out there you know selling bonds or selling derivatives or stuff you know they'll have a heart attack when they're 40. <laughs> they might have yeah. a big pile of money in the bank <laughs> if they're really good at what it is yeah. but it doesn't do you much good if your heart doesn't work yeah, yeah. Well, you'll need it for the medical expenses. So <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, Henry, thank you very much for joining us today. Before we go, uh, can you tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Sure. So um, I primarily coach entrepreneurs. So if you go to my site, like I said, DAS Knowledge, D A A S Knowledge. Uh, if you misspell it, D A S S, that'll still get you to the site because I have <laughs> both URLs because people misspell my name. It's mm -hmm. called being lawyers call that belts and braces, right? <laughs> um, so um, that's uh, that has pretty much everything that I do with my business coaching. Again, my avatar usually has a top line around a million bucks and has been in business for a couple of years. Um, right. Although I'm working with a startup now, if they have funding, it's okay. Again, I charge real U.S. dollars for my services. Um, you can download my book for free on the website if you go to the FQ tab. I also uh, run um, Curated Masterminds, which is another thing I do. I mean, everything's kind of on the, on the site. Great. Um, a lot of resources and a lot of, a lot of freebie giveaways that I have in there, like PDFs and stuff like that. Excellent. All right. Well, listen, thanks so much for your time today, Henry. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.